Minecraft is a great game. You can build absolutely anything. It is a game of pure freedom. However, if you are making Minecraft houses and they're looking a lot like this, but you really want them to look like this, then this is the video for you. It's going to take you from a building noob to a building pro, and it can't cover everything. So the things I'm going to cover today are shape, roofs, style and palette, and adding extras. I won't be covering how to make interior or going over organics or mega mega structures. This is mainly your small time Minecraft houses. So let's get straight into the advice. Shape is the single most important thing and it's going to make up the bulk of this video. But once you get this right, you'll find everything else pretty easy. So as you can see, I've got a really big rectangle, which I've raised up a considerable height. What I want to show you first of all, is kind of how not to build when it comes to shape. And I want to show you the problems with dealing with a singular large block like I have here, because often, People make these single shapes and expect that they can detail them into a good looking build, but that's not the case. You need to have a decent shape planned out before you even get started. So if I put a roof on this big box, that's what it looks like. It's way too wide. The wider it is, the taller that the roof has to go to meet in the middle. And that's exactly what we don't want. We need to make sure that we break up this shape so that we can detail it more efficiently. So even when we add in staircases, this house does not look good. That wall is way too big. So one thing that we can do, and this is just a very, very basic way to break up the shape, is to add rectangles on top of your big box. So starting with a big box isn't necessarily a bad thing, but leaving them as all four sides completely flat is not a good idea. So all I've done is added a single rectangle that sits directly in the middle of our front face. So if we raise up the walls like we did before to their full height, because we have three individual faces now, we can raise up the roof and meet in the middle much sooner than we did before, meaning that it looks a lot more at home, especially when we add some staircases. We have our three individual ones that all have a very nice height to them as opposed to the original one which was way too big you can really tell the difference that one little rectangle on the shape has produced a much nicer effect however i now want to of course take it even further this is exactly the same rectangle size as we had at the start and we're going to be adding even more shape and even more variations i want to show you how shape is important in making houses. So I'm going to be adding a bunch of random shapes to this floor plan. And when I was making this, it's completely free flow, meaning that I didn't have an entire vision for the build because a lot of the time people say, I don't know what to build. Well, you could do something like this where you start with a rectangle and you add little bits here and there, maybe even curve off a corner like I have here. If you're going to do that, make sure that the curve is not too big because they are hard to deal with and just add little bits onto the side of your gigantic rectangle. And then from there, we can start working on how we're going to build this up. But having this floor plan that isn't just a rectangle is the first step to making sure that your house will have a fantastic shape. And it's the shape of the building that people will see first, not the details, nothing else. It will be the overall shape and impression. So the first thing to do is raise up the house to the height that you want. You always want to make sure that it is more than three blocks or at minimum three blocks because you don't want to bang your head on the roof. I severely recommend going for five, six or seven maybe even a little bit more. Now, this is obviously the first story. We're going to be raising it up further, but we want some of our shape to stop here because we really need to ensure 
that every single angle is considered in the shape. These walls will not just be flat surfaces that go to the top. This little bit of roof that I've added at the first floor, this adds another dimension to the shape. Not only does it curve inwards to the build, it also adds a layer on the Y coordinate, and that's very, very important. It's going to be a little bit complicated and hard to explain, but hopefully, as you start freestyling a little more, these things will make a bit more sense as you come in. So I've chosen three of the bits that I've added on this build to stop at the first level before I raise up the rest of the walls. For this bit in particular, I decided to add some of it to the first layer and then have the rest of it extend up. So it's going to produce a pretty unique shape. The point is that you can experiment with all of these little extensions off of your main build. So just by adding a few staircases here and having it stop dead there, it means that the rest of the wall can be extended much higher and create a very varying shape for our build. And it won't be until the whole thing is completed that you will really see the effects of these plans. And considering this is all freestyle, we don't know if it's going to turn out badly or well in the first place. So it does take a bit of experimenting, but as you build more, you will realize what works and what doesn't work. And what doesn't work is large portions of walls. So we've got these little rectangles that we can actually start adding in our roofs to. Now I'm going to go over roofs later on in this video as they are very, very important in building. I am using your bog standard staircases here, just your normal up and down, nothing else, to demonstrate how important the shape is for your build, but we will come back to roofs a bit later on. Here I'm not even going to add a bog standard roof, I'm going to be adding a balcony. That's something to consider when you're making your houses that you can just take entire chunks of it, slice it off, make it flat, and just have a balcony with a door in there and maybe even a little roof made out of something like slabs just to cover it over. So once we've done that, I've kind of taken care of the easy parts. On the right hand side you'll see I've got this very hard right angled corner and I need to figure out what I'm going to do with it. So this is where you might have a problem part where you just can't find something that looks right. Sometimes you need a bit of lateral thinking to make it work. So as you can see, I've actually knocked out some of the corner to try and ease off that really dominating shape of that hard right angle corner. The idea of this particular stage of trying to teach you about the shape is to try and get you to think in a different mentality to building. Instead of making the box first and then trying to make it look good, I'm trying to sort of teach you that you need your box to look good and then the details come naturally. So for example, this part here was somewhat of a problem. How do I make this look less odd? It was, you know, that flat edge didn't look quite right. Just add another little extra bit on the top. It's quite easy, you don't have to be so hard set on your shape once it's laid down. If something doesn't work, you change it, you add to it, you remove from it. The idea is to get you feeling really flexible about building and not getting too worked up about one thing not looking right. Sometimes when you look at one particular floor to a building over and over again, it can really like play tricks on your mind and you're like, oh, I this just, it all doesn't work. But to be honest with you, from an outside perspective, people might not even realize. So look at the difference we have in the shape here. Look how we started with the one box and just added a single roof on it. Compare that to what we just made and you see how for some very simple extension rectangles on exactly the same size floor plan makes for an infinitely better shape. And like I said, it's the shape of the build that you notice the most. Even on that middle one, you can see that it looks slightly better, but nowhere near as nice as this one on the right, which I completely just free flowed from the start. And you're probably wondering, what does this look like when it's finished? Obviously, all I've done here is put on some basic roof and some walls. 
So this is what it looks like. Only the front face has been detailed. The rest of them have just been connected up and given some framework. Most of you already know if you've been on my channel a while that framing and walls is the easy bit, but the shape is exactly the same as what we just made. So you can see how the details come second to the shape of the house. Everything looks so nice, even without windows, even without any details in it. All that's been added there is a framework, and that's just to sort of make the house look a bit more structurally sound. So you can see literally how important the overall shape is. We couldn't do this to a normal house, and we can even change the palette of the build, that means changing the colors of the blocks and the block type, and we get exactly the same shape, but an infinitely better looking house. There's so much you can do. Changing the blocks and changing the color, again, comes second to the shape. If you've got a good looking house with a shape that impresses someone, you could probably turn it into sponge and it'd still look pretty good. So I think I've made my point. You can't polish a poo. <laughs> the, imagine that the first one that we made, that simple box, is the poo. You could dress it up, you could put sprinkles on it, but at the end of the day it would still be a poo. You need to make something really nice, a brilliant Victoria sponge cake. Make a cake and then you can decorate it and at the end of the day it's a very nice looking cake. Hopefully that metaphor hasn't gone over your head. So obviously shape isn't the only thing that you have to get right in building, but it is the most important thing. What we're going to go on to now is some of the other aspects of building, starting with... Roofs. Obviously, we just did some of them when we were talking about shape, but I want to go over some different styles and highlight how, if you had exactly the same build, how the roof style and how it's built makes a different impact on every single one. So what we've got here is quite a common shape used in rustic houses and sort of Viking houses. It's one that you use a staircase, then a block, and then a staircase, and then a block, and eventually you get this really nice sort of bell curve over the top of your framework, and it creates a really nice shape. So that's one type of roof you could use. Another one is to use just slabs, which creates a very gradual effect. You can use slabs on particular styles, such as desert houses, or perhaps even in modern situations where you don't want very large roofs. There's a lot of places where you want to also mix them. So you might have some where you have your bog standard staircase roofs, and then you have some little overhangs where you just want it to be very gradual. Mixing and matching is a great technique to use when you're making your roofs. The third one along that I've got is kind of similar to this one, but it goes up more rigidly and it goes up really sharply. So it's just a much larger version. Now obviously this is very dominating and you need to be careful when you use roof styles like this where you have a staircase and then two blocks and it may be even three blocks because you will get this very tall sharp looking build however if you're making something like a church this would work really really well the point is that you have to use them in conjunction with the style of the build so this again looks like a normal bog standard one but we've mixed and matched with some slabs in there and instead of using staircases all the way along, we've got two different types of full blocks. So obviously the palette of these builds is exactly the same. And indeed, the layout of all four of these buildings is exactly the same. The only thing that's different is the roof style. And you can see how much of a difference it makes having a different shape of frame, having either a shorter roof or a longer roof or a curved roof. The point is it needs to match the style, which is what we're going to talk about now. Theming. Obviously I can't go over every single type of house that exists, but hopefully I can point out some of the features of different styles and how it dictates how the shape is, how the roof is, and how you choose different style blocks. This is the one we just went over, so you're already pretty familiar with it. 
but I'll show you some more examples. For example, this one here is a mock Tudor style and it's got some very different features. The roof style is similar to something that you just saw, and indeed the layout is very similar with an L shape. What really differs here is the choice of blocks. We've got the darker wood and the lighter wool to kind of make the mock Tudor style. Here we have a desert house. Again, exactly the same shape here, but the way we detail it and the blocks that we choose have defined how this has looked. So in the corners, we've got some slabs with a gap in them, but not a lot of over detailing here. It's a very simple looking build with some very horizontal like detailing. Next up is a stereotypical modern house. Again, an L shape, but the way that we've chosen the blocks that match this, the snow and the clay, have defined how this looks. This is a very minimalist build. You don't need to add that much to make this work. Modern houses are a bit of a weird one, and I actually made a dedicated video on how to make them in detail. So this is perhaps not the best example, but you can see that the color choice and the block choice really make this build what it is. Now we've got a very stereotypical house, what you might expect someone to make in a survival world. I want to point out some of the features. We've got a very standard roof. We've chosen colors which complement each other, but don't overwhelm anybody. It's a very simple design there. Lastly is probably the more complicated one. This is again an L shape framework and everything else, but we've gone for the gray blocks. There are more gray blocks than any other color in Minecraft, and it's very normal to gravitate towards them. And as you can see, you can make some pretty good buildings out of them because you've got so many different shades of texture, but they are all gray and complement each other. So it's really important when you are going over your style to really think about what palette you are going to use and how that's going to dictate your roof and your shape and everything else. Obviously, all of these houses are all L shape. They are, they are built from the same floor plan, and that's very important. You can tell that each one of these is different simply because of the blocks chosen and the roof that they were given. However, you can add lots of things to a perhaps lackluster build to improve it, which is what I'm going to talk about now. Adding extras. This little segment here is for people that have completed their build, but they're not quite happy with how it's come out, or perhaps they feel like it's still missing something. So this is here to teach you how to add to your build without having to start over. What I've made here is a very bog standard house with a nice shape, it's even got details which we haven't gone over yet, it's got a good roof, and it looks fairly nice, but it could use something else. One thing that you can do to a house to improve it is add a dormer. So there's only two changes that I've made. On the right hand side here, I've added just an extra window nestled inside the roof itself. This works particularly well if you have a really tall roof. And sometimes you find yourself in that situation. And what it means is you're left with a large portion of the same texture. So by adding that, you fill in a space. The other thing that I added to sort of gravitate this build having more height is adding a chimney in there as well, made out of cobblestone, as it matches the style of this sort of rustic house. Another thing that we can do is add balconies and add decking. Adding a patio or little extras around the build on the floor or adding a balcony outside the window is a fantastic way to extend your build and make it flow into its surroundings a lot nicer. All we've added is a simple platform that runs around a half of our build and it adds so much. You can tell the difference between the left hand side and the right hand side. The house on the right really starts to fit in, and if you compare it to our original one, you can see the progression of changes and how it's improved the build. 
So you might have thought that that first house, hey, that looks pretty good. But now you can see by adding little things to integrate it into its surroundings, to fill in spaces where there could be something there, really make a difference. Now there are plenty of alternatives, you don't have to make just a patio. For example here we've got a garden which is attached to the side of the house and we've got a pathway that comes from the door itself. So that's just one other option and also there's cobwebs there that acts as smoke. Now this is the finale piece, we've also added not just the garden and the dormer and the gravel path at the front but also an extra piece on the top. One of the things that you could criticize about the original house is that it just has a very flat top and nothing on top. So you could add a second story. That's always a feasible choice if you have a building where something is really missing. And then you could even add a balcony on that and dormers and before you know it, you've got a really complicated looking build without trying too hard. But if you want to keep it simple and you're happy with the smaller build, there is nothing wrong with the house on the left. But I don't think you can disagree that the progression from left to right significantly improves the house through very minor changes. So I hope that I've shown you here in this segment that it's very feasible to have a finished product but still feel like there's something missing. So hopefully I've taught you some techniques here that you can use to improve your already finished builds. But I haven't gone over one of the most important things that you need to do, which is... Detailing. A very controversial thing as some people have different preferences to others. What I'm going to tell you is my preferences and my style of building, obviously because it's my video. So, on the left I've got some don'ts and on the right I've got some do's. On the don't side, I do not recommend spamming slabs to fill space. Just because you can fill an area full of blocks does not mean that it's detailed. It can often make a build look really, really busy unintentionally. Whereas if we went on the right, you can see that we've just got something to fill in the corners to take the edge off of those really hard right angles, and then that leaves us able to put something in like a window, instead of just filling it full of slabs. We can also use trapdoors to really great effect, particularly on wooden builds. They fit in nicely because they're thinner than a normal slab, and they've got a different texture. So you can see the difference between the first one and this one. Another option is to add potted plants. This is a particular favorite of mine. You'll have probably seen me do it in plenty of videos. What it really allows you to do is add color to a very monotone build. So all of these that we've just seen are incredibly brown, nothing else. So the potted plants add green, red, yellow. It depends what flowers you put there. Very useful technique. So basically what I'm now going to show you is how we can use this same piece of wall and exactly the same dimensions and how we can use it differently. Because usually you have segments of walls this big, sort of five across and three up, that kind of thing. Hoppers is a particularly odd block because of its weird and unique shape. It looks like a very nice supporting beam and we've also got cobblestone wall and iron fences to consider. So obviously the palette has changed to a more gray one, uh, still very monotone, but there are more options here as we can use cobblestone wall more freely and all of the other staircases and slabs. Some of the other things you can do if you've got a slightly wider one or you've got the top of your building, you can decorate it slightly differently. So as you can see, we've got a very large window, but we've also added some light sources. Obviously in normal survival, it gets dark half of the time you're playing. So adding light sources is a pretty important thing to do. Adding staircases under your overhangs and even adding slabs under your framework is a good way to tie everything in together, but also not keeping it really overcrowded with over detailing. And you don't always have to stop when you've completed a roof. So obviously I've got exactly the same thing over here and the roof doesn't stop. You just continue the tower through the roof and you get a really nice effect. 
it's a good detailing tip as well as a good shaping tip. And I'll show you an example of a way I would not do it myself personally. Some people really like this look where it's really over detailed, but for me, it's so crowded that it detracts from the shape of the build, which as I said at the start of this video is one of the most important things. So you can see that just putting slabs and staircases and walls in there doesn't make it any better of a build. It just sort of covers up builds. Hopefully that makes sense. So don't feel the need to do that. Make some very distinct shaping and you will get a very nice looking build. And finally, just a very simple to, one to finish off on is that you can add two tones. Obviously, everything that I've shown you so far has been monochrome, meaning, you know, just gray or just brown. You can add in different colors to improve your build. It completely depends on the style of it. So that's pretty much it for my tips or building noob to pro video. Hopefully this wasn't too much of an information overload. There was an awful lot to take in. Hopefully some of these things will have highlighted where you might be struggling with building and how you might be able to improve. And if you've got a build which you want to improve, maybe some of these techniques will help you to do so. Anyway, regardless of any of that, I hope that this has helped you. It's been a more serious tone. I know that this hasn't been the happy-go-lucky build. It hasn't been a block-to-block -block tutorial. This has been a bog standard, this is how you improve kind of video. If you liked it, please let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more building tips like this, make sure to leave a like. That's how I can gauge your interest. Thank you very, very much for watching and goodbye.